It's a surprising fact that in centuries past, many people who worked on boats couldn't actually swim. Human beings can learn to swim, of course, but we're naturally land-going and not aquatic. Water is an alien element we're taught to be wary of from our infancy. We may need it to live. It may become part of our everyday activities, but it can also kill us. So, when God opted to lead the Israelite people out of Egypt by the desert rather than the shorter coast road to avoid conflict with other warlike tribes, he pushed them instead towards another danger, a vast marine gulf. With the resentful Egyptian ruler in pursuit, a massive column of vulnerable people was quite literally between the devil and the deep blue sea. Reaching any point of no return usually means feeling the fear but doing it anyway so Moses must now lead from the front even if he's no idea at all how they can possibly survive the waters. Sidekick Aaron their sister Miriam, who'd famously saved him as a baby from the water, and his wife and children are supporting him. But if they are wondering how they can all make it out alive, how much more so are all those who barely even know Moses? Of course, we thought life would improve when Aaron brought our Moses back from Midian. I was overjoyed to have him back after all that had happened. We could so easily have died when our baby boys were being drowned. But thanks to that basket we found, well, here he was, all grown up with sons of his own. Nothing panned out quite how I'd imagined, though. Moses was a man on a mission. Killing one brutal overseer, mm, that was just the tip of the pyramid. If there was one block... For every Egyptian thug, he aimed to topple the lot. And behind it all lay not the graven images of his upbringing, but the one true God, protector of his ancestors. Our ancestors. He didn't want to say why. Aaron did. Seemed that our other brother had met with God on some holy mountain or other and been recruited to save his own. Hmm. Thus the negotiations began, well, if you can call them that. Egyptian rulers don't do U-turns, they'll be daft. They're convinced their might is right. Our two brothers had endless royal audiences. Let my people go. That was their only demand. But the man with the snake's head hat, oh, he wasn't giving in. Outrage after outrage, God visited on the Egyptian overlords. Discomfort, hardship, out and out terror rained down on them all. Then we, well, we were sharing our first Passover feast as the angel of death carried off all Egyptian firstborn males in a single night. It were time to leave now, all right? Now, to make our way, like old Father Abraham centuries back. The word went round like wildfire. No time to pack, just the clothes neighbours provided and the valuables we could carry. Well, Egyptians surrendered gold and silver just to get rid. Gather everyone, livestock too, and assemble beyond the Israelite ghetto. A vast crowd, fidgeting with hope and anxiety. And my brother, staff in hand, directing, encouraging, reassuring. If it hadn't been for the plagues, well, they wouldn't have believed him. Never mind Pharaoh, but in those crippling blows came, crashing like waves on a beach. We'd already walked miles, doubled back just to camp, when we spotted the Egyptian army behind us, chariot after chariot, 
churning up the sand. Some were shouting at my brother then. Are there no graveyards in Egypt that you bring us out here to die in the desert? We'd rather work for them than die here. But Moses and Aaron urged him on. Hurry! Though we never could outrun the cavalry. Suddenly, a great swirling cloud rose up ahead. It was weirdly solemn, like a standard. Later it veered round between us and them. We like a desert storm, but hardly random, preventing their advance. As darkness were falling, bolts of light blazed from inside it, lighting our path while dust were blinding the chasing pack. We carried parents as well as children then. Hopeful banter turned to huffing and cursing, babies crying, the elderly confused and livestock panicking. Suddenly, the water lay before us, shimmering, calm. Yet an east wind was rising. Moses, he stood at the very edge as though we were listening, but not to the chaos nor Aaron in his ear. He closed his eyes and he stretched out his arm over the waves. A low, low rumbling and the ground shuddered. Then there was a sound like a waterfall, for it was falling up. I clutched my kids. Like a thunderbolt striking a river, the water surged and boiled, leaping to right and left. The shingle crackled as the waters retreated, and time stood still. A stunned silence spread through the entire crowd. Suddenly, I realised in the half-light a sandbank were appearing, stretching out like a bridge toward the other side. Hurry, my brother shouted, opening his eyes. He and Aaron pushed people forwards, but they were terrified. So, picking up my youngest, he stepped down onto the seabed and marched out like he were going for an evening stroll. Pass it along, Aaron shouted. Take the highway our God has made. <laughs> it were more like an underpass. But people did begin to follow, stumbling, well, like dreamers, slithering after Moses through the rocky shallows, trying to ignore the water. Getting everyone across seemed to take forever. But as the very last feet found the other side, Moses turned back. The cloud were dissipating and the cavalry, they were charging after us. In the distance, chariot wheels were sinking. Terrified horses were rearing up as they tried to wheel round. Amid the crush and the din, I noted Moses standing there, putting out his arm once again. The waters inwards. My heart pounded. I couldn't watch. The din! Then silence. God had sworn he would cover himself in glory. <laughs> it were impossible, but we'd made it. I rummaged. For me tambourine! I will sing to the Lord, glorious his triumph, horse and rider is thrown into the sea. And all around, voices joined in the chorus. At the sea, the Israelites had no way back. Back to the awful but familiar life of drudgery in Egypt. Letting go of that still wasn't easy. 
now they would be homeless in a hostile landscape. But they were together. Their shared experience of passing through deadly waters was the last word in persuasion. There was none so great as the great I am. Even those who couldn't swim had crossed the sea without a boat. And the result was God had assembled a community of faith. However limited their understanding, they now knew only the God of the ancestral promises could have contrived this miraculous rescue. They'd only had to follow his chosen leader, to trust God. But like children learning to swim, they'd still find that challenging. Centuries later, this community's descendants would need reminding whose people they were, and another Moses.